What's up, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Afan, and today we're going to watch this show called Better Call Saul. We're in season two. It's the finale, the final episode, episode 10, called Click with a K. Now then, I'm uh, really interested in knowing what happens next, because in the last episode, we left it off on quite a cliffhanger. Chuck hits his head on the counter, and I might have heard a crack. I'm not sure how severely damaged he might be. I think he will be damaged quite a bit. Is he dead? I mean, I heard a crack. He had a hit his head on the counter. I mean, it wasn't like a small little hit. It was, it, it looked fatal. And I really hope it's not. I hope he's okay. Well, I know he's not going to be okay, but I hope he eventually is okay. How is Jimmy going to react to that? Because he is watching all of this unfold. Is Ernie going to make the call to 911? Is he going to call 911? He was specifically instructed by Chuck and others, Jimmy included, not to call 911 when uh, Chuck is going through something like that because of, I presume, electronics, so on and so forth. But yeah, things are heating up between the McGill bros as well. This was like the first time we saw Jimmy take on Chuck. So now Chuck, I mean, now Jimmy is uh, trying to go up against his brother. So far, we only saw Chuck sort of uh, backstab Jimmy. And finally, Jimmy returns the favor. Now again, and I just don't see that ending up well for Chuck, because Jimmy's very good at doing that. Jimmy is a bad guy, and he's very good at being the bad guy. He's known as Slipping Jimmy for a reason. So I don't think it's a great idea from Chuck to take him on, but it seems like he's going to take him on. Also, some of you seem to think that I just hate, just think that Chuck is the only bad guy in this show. No, that's not what I think. I think Jimmy's a bad guy. I've said it so many times. I mean, you can literally make a video of me saying Jimmy's an asshole and so on and so forth. Just of that alone. Like maybe a five minute video. But Chuck is also not a great guy. Chuck is what we call a lawful evil. That's a D&D &D term that I learned when I was watching Stranger Things. So he's very lawful. Everything he does is legal. He's a straight guy. You know, he does everything by the book. But he does have some hatred towards Jimmy, that is, in his heart. There is a bit of envy. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but he does want Jimmy to sort of fail. He doesn't want Jimmy to succeed. He's putting hurdles in his way at every turn, you know? So that's why I can't exactly like the guy, simply because... The stuff that he's doing is legal. Like it, it takes a bit more for people to like you than just doing things that are legal. I mean, the whole thing in Breaking Bad was: is Walt and Mike and Gus and these guys are these wrong? Are these guys right or wrong? I mean, Mike literally had a whole monologue about you know, just because the law says it's wrong doesn't mean it's actually morally wrong. You know, we can have a debate about that, but get one thing in your head, Jimmy. I don't think is a good guy, but I don't think he's the only bad guy in this show. Otherwise, this show would be bland. The reason why I love the Breaking Bad show and this show is because each character is so complex. There's no good or bad. There's good and bad in everyone. Even Kim, who I thought was like an angel, like everything she did was great. It turns out she likes scamming people too. She's done it twice now, once unwarranted without any push from jimmy so like all the characters have are, are in this gray area and that's why i love this show but yeah if i have to pick between jimmy and chuck i'm picking jimmy jimmy's our guy saul's our guy i love jimmy i love saul Fuck chuck there we go but does that mean i think chuck is wrong no i don't think he's wrong in what he's saying what he's saying we know is right Anyways, that's enough of that. Let's jump into this video. Without any further ado, we have something going on over on the other side with Mike as well. I'm not entirely sure what's happening with him. Oh, we open with the hospital scene. So he's been taken to the hospital then? No, no, no. This is the past. This is not... Brady's in the chapel. Just push the call button if you want to see him. Oh, okay, yeah, this is the path. Is this their dad? Come on, Chuck, let's go over to Novi's and stretch our legs, get some air, a couple hoagies. You want to get a sandwich now? Just a thought. That's their mom. It's a woman, so... 
Remember that time I accidentally invited Kathy and Cheryl to mom's surprise party? It's kind of tricky out on the dance floor. It was a fun night. I just remember the whole family cleaning up after you. And mom leaving her own birthday party to drive one of them home. Thank you, me. Seriously, Chuck, we gotta eat it. <laughs> mom will be okay for a few minutes. It's been three days, it could be three more. Let's go, buddy. You wanna eat? Go eat. I'll bring you something. Uh, roast beef, no tomato, Italian on the side. Right. Okay, be right back. It's tough to leave when you're going through something like that. She's in a coma? It's been three days. Three days for what? <laughs> Man. Jimmy. No, Mom, it's me, Chuck. Jimmy. No, Mom, it's me. Oh. So this is it then? I'm sorry. She has that DNR. Is your brother in the building? Wait, what? Use the intercom. Mm. My grandma just recently, during COVID actually, the later years, when things had calmed down, went through something very similar. She was on life support, so... That guy doesn't know how to react. He literally said, is this it? Like... Oh, Jimmy. And she said Jimmy's name. My grandma actually said my name. Her son, my uncle, was sitting right there trying to talk to her. And she said she was talking. Th that was her last word was my name. Hey, Chuck. So, of course, my One of the last words. She's gone. He called me. He was crying. He was like, get here as soon as you can. Did she wake up? Did she say anything? <clears throat> no. Oh, come on. Tell me she said his name. <clears throat> Excuse me. So now we're back to current time. Chuck. 615 gold. Buddy, you, you okay? Wow, his head. Lance. Okay, everything will be all right. You have to turn off the lights. No, we can't do that oh. right now, sweetie. <laughs> you fell and hit your head. <clears throat> no EKG. Yes, Charles, we need to do an EKG. Okay? No, you don't Charles. understand. I have a condition. Charles. I have a hypersensitivity to electricity. This is what they were talking about at the in season one. What if something like this happens? Very simple cat scan. No, no hey, cat scan. Calm, calm. calm. Hmm. No cat so scan. Can we get some restraints. <laughs> It's sad to see this because this is how he's reacting to this, yet he's willing to put up with this stuff then when he has to take down Jimmy. We got you. Just keep your head down. That's her, yeah. She knows. I'd love to be able to tell you, but I can't know for sure until we do those tests. Ernie. I'm gonna say. I kind of think he doesn't want to be here. What he wants and what he needs are two very different. Yeah, they've mentioned this before as well. We don't know if his spine has been injured, if his brain is swelling, and he likely has a concussion at least. That's a pretty hard head to the head as well. What about a temporary emergency guardianship? He fits the parameters. You're telling me he's in need of medical care so urgent that we can't wait around on court procedure? Oh, certainly. Yeah, and Chuck is not able to understand the consequences. I mean, he can understand them, but Absolutely. He... A judge will see it that way, too. And then I take him home, and it's over. Pending results and proper treatment, yes. I think Jimmy might be making a mistake here. I think they should commit him at this point. Like, this is, this is seriously dangerous. Let me be the one to tell him. But he's going to go crazy, though, if they do. That's... that's... Man... I still don't know what the right decision there is. Well, if it isn't Johnny on the spot. What? What does that mean? Is Ernesto out there? Can I get you some? Ernesto! 
Come in here, please. Just take it easy. Ernesto. Ernesto, how long was I unconscious in that print shop? I'm not sure. 30 seconds, a minute, two minutes. I'd say maybe about a minute. You're kind of in and out. How quickly did... Before the ambulance arrived? About 10 minutes, I think, but I didn't look at the clock. And yet you were there. Jimmy. Yep. So can we, uh... There's only one way you could have gotten there so quickly. You never left. See? I think you're getting... Even in this much pain. You, deep you bribed him. You paid that half-wit to swear he'd never laid eyes on you. And then you... Mr. McGill. Just want to have a laugh at my expense? I called him. I called Jimmy earlier before I picked you up. He showed up when he did because I called him. Yeah, he did. I was worried about you and I just... I called him. I'm sorry. Ernesto, come in yeah. in clutch. <laughs> that was a great movie. Both of you. Oh, man. Again, he's right, but look at his condition and then look at what he's saying. Look at what he's thinking about in this moment. Chuck, there's something. You can't I tell me. And I'm really sorry. He likes Jimmy, you know? He clearly doesn't like him. A temporary. Temporary emergency guardianship. Well, you finally got me where you want me. Well, if he wanted that, he would have done it a long time ago, Chuck. See, this is what I'm saying. The guy's just a like jimmy looks after him he has been on his side every doctor pretty much everyone even kim said commit him i'm fine to hang out you know whatever you need Nah, we're good here hey ernie how come you said that about calling me he did call you didn't huh? your brother the way he's been talking about you lately it's like he's really out to get you jimmy and no but ernesto did call him didn't he you're my friend yeah, they used to work in the mail room, right? Thanks. Was that a different episode? Might have been a different episode. Okay, so Ernesto actually helped him out there. <laughs> yeah, well. Okay, cool. It's that driver? The truck driver? They think he did something? It's Mike. Primum non nocere. First do no harm. This is not the way to treat my condition. It's as though I had a, an allergy to penicillin and yet you persist on treating my infection with it. I appreciate the analogy, Charles, but I don't think it quite fits. Yeah, it doesn't. I remember these with Walt. They were pretty intense. Now oh, these are going to be a whole nother level. Of intensity, I mean, oh yeah, there it is. It's Kim. She said it, the whole test would be like 10 minutes. Maybe I had to start over. What, 20 times? It's gonna be Miss Averde, right? If he, he checks these, that's gonna piss him off even more. You are the greatest generation. Jimmy, you didn't start world. Oh, it's his uh, ad. Tech finished it. And if that weren't enough, you sent a rocket 300 feet tall. Ah, he shot others too. You need someone looking out for you, someone you can trust, count on. Gimme Jimmy! Gimme Jimmy! Gimme Jimmy! Jimmy, Jimmy. <laughs> Jimmy McGill. Ah, there's a school shot. <laughs> it's really good, Jimmy. You made a really good commercial. Wait, what was that thing? The weasel right after that reminded me of a uh, Mike situation. It's gonna go in. The radiologist said everything looks normal with Charles's head and spine. The EKG was normal. My best guess is Charles had what's called a stress-related syncope. It's basically a panic attack. However, there was... Chuck, hey buddy, it's me. I said everything looks good, so let's get you out of here. What do you say? Not talking. What's wrong with them? Whatever you gave them should have worn off already, right? 
What's going on? Uh, he just doesn't want to talk to you because you did what he didn't want you to do. We think it's a state of self-induced catatonia. We. Always with the we. I think it's you. You're the only doctor in the room. I think you fried his brain with that machine. Jimmy. Sorry, this is bullshit. When I first treated Charles, he was in a similar state. I have to believe that it's just a matter of time before he comes out of it. Matter of time. Oh, I thought he was just not talking. Right. Mm -hmm. Shot left. 1.5 minutes. Oh, it's that gun guy again. See, this is what I was saying. The brain is so amazing. Because... 762, you could put 3,500 through it. He can, like, go through a day if it's something that he really wants. Maybe you've seen him with work and, you know, Jimmy stuff. But if his mind doesn't want it, it doesn't matter what you tell him. It's just... It's not gonna go well. And it's gonna have real consequences. Such as that one. I thought he's just not talking because they did what he didn't want them to do, John. You know I mean, that sort of thing. Send it. Hit. Sit or hit. Nice. Look at that. Uh, if you got to shoot through a heavy window, I'll up you to a 180. But as you know, you'll have to recalculate the shot. 168 will do it. <laughs> How many boxes? Just the one. Ah, it's on the house. Now, one last thing. No offense. <laughs> None taken. <Yeah. laughs> These are both as professionals as professionals can get. They're both bad guys. Similar to Jimmy. He's back? Yeah, he's back. Palestinian meeting. Back with us. How are you? I get some water, please. Yeah, yeah, water. Hey. Oh, shit. Sorry. Right. <laughs> Want some more? It's okay, and so is that crack on your head, so that's all I wanted to know. What about the TEG? T stands for temporary, right? Hmm. If things start going south for you again, how am I even going to know? I'm fine. I promise. I mean, I don't even have a key, so... <laughs> Can I get you back here? Is that a tape? You know those old cassette tapes with the holes in them? I... I... I think I don't know why it looked like that to me. I have a card that looks like that. Like a credit card, I mean. Okay, there's that pattern on it. My first ever one, actually. Got it as a student. It's in college a few years back. <laughs> yeah. Gonna bury him alive? Someone behind him? Our cousins. Two in one. And like that. <laughs> Nacho, get out of the way. You're gonna kill him. That's it. Ah, well, it's done. Too close. I wonder if the bullet will go through two heads. If he only just shot one of the cousins there, things would have been so much... Well... Let me not go there. By the way, speaking of Burba, Breaking Bad. What's he doing? Hmm. 
going on? The chirping went away as well, the cricket thing. He doesn't hear the horn? It's not that car, it's his car. Don't go near that car. Maybe they put a bomb or something in it. Whoa. Don't. Wait, who put that there? Like, was it Nacho? But Nacho's there still. He's not. Can't be Nacho, because he's not. In the house. There was a stick there. But someone just did it now. Well, if you get, like, on a... You know, a peak, like a high point, you would probably see the car or them ran away or whatever. But I promise to get to each and every one of you in turn. Mrs. DeShazo, my dear, I believe you're next. But first, may I get anybody some coffee? Can I talk to you? Right, excuse me one second. Everybody wants coffee. Keep Howard just called. He says he's been trying to reach you all morning. It's about Chuck. It's important. That's all he'll say. Unfortunately, uh, my associate tells me I'm needed for some brief but pressing legal business. Wow. Quick phone call. Uh, in the meantime, who was it who wanted coffee? All of them. Yeah, okay. Th uh, this young lady will get you coffee. <laughs> You're the receptionist now. Congratulations, Kim. You've been hired. <laughs> oh, lovely. <laughs> Are you behind this? Am I behind what? Miss Verde? No, 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 come on. Open the door. I know why you're here. We can discuss it later. Right now, I'm busy. Goodbye. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> it's a little... Zzz. It's not right me not having a key to this place. Chuck? What's going on? Does he have the whole house wrapped like that? What's up? Oh. It was tape, just a different kind of tape. It's the other tape. See, I think these walls are pretty solid. What I really need is a proper Faraday kit. Do not patronize me, Jimmy. I'm not crazy. Right. Definitely not. Howard tells me you quit HHM. You're his number one guy. Without you, that whole place goes down the drain. He hasn't been going all this time. It's fine. You retired, not just from HHM, but the law. Uh, the law needs you. I think he needs the law. And you need it. Yeah, to get his mind distracted. How are you going to retire before you get me disbarred, before you run me out of town on a rail? I'll be the only McGill carrying the family name. You can't have that. <laughs> Is this... If you truly do think that I rat-fucked you on that thing, which I did not, but whatever, well, you know what? You get mad. When you're 99, you can drop dead giving closing arguments to JudgeBot 3000, which will run on electricity, by the way. That's your future, okay? So, simple, nothing little bank address. 1216 instead of 1261. Ah. I screwed it up. I hurt the client. Blew it completely and utterly. Ooh. Is Jimmy gonna tell him? It's just goddamn electricity. My brain... My mind, it used to be, you know, it used to work, and now it doesn't anymore. <laughs> People got hurt because of me. Time to end it. He's going to tell him, isn't he? What if I told you you didn't make a mistake? You'd say, I told you so. I knew it. Stop humoring me. Stop trying to talk everything right. Mm. Mm -mm. I rat Mm-mm. Mm-mm. It was me. 
Uh-uh. I would have made Nixon proud. Uh, uh. I changed 1261 to 1216. It was me. It all went down exactly like you said. I mean, exactly. I doctored the copies. I paid the kid at the shop. He's not going to believe him because... It is insane how you got every detail. Exactly. He's going to think he's just trying to get me back. To work because that brain of yours is chugging along at a thousand percent efficiency. Are you telling the truth or are you just trying yeah. to make me feel better? I am saying it to make you feel better. Sure, sh wouldn't be telling you otherwise, but yes, it's the truth. You'd go to such lengths to humiliate me. I did it for Kim. She worked her butt off to get Mesa Verde while you and Howard sat around sipping scotch and chortling. Hamlin, Hamlin, McGill, more like Scrooge and Marley. Kim deserves Mesa Verde, not you, not HHM. But I, I honestly didn't think it would hurt you so bad. I thought you'd just say, oh crap, I made a mistake and go on with your life like a normal person. But oh no, wishful thinking. So can I uh, tell Howard you're not quitting or retiring or whatever? Can we take all the shit down off the wall? <laughs> You do realize you just confessed to a felony? I guess. But you feel better, right? Besides, it's your word against mine. I swear to God, I told you I saw a tape. I told you I saw a tape. That's exactly what I saw. When he said it's your word against mine, that's when I was like, oh, I think it might have been a tape. So that just happened. Lovely. OK, um, Jimmy just confessed to a felony. Wow, that's great. Now then, OK, hmm, how is that going to go down? Is don't you don't you need consent? from the other person for them to be recorded i'm thinking if it's like a felony or something and you know like let's say someone murdered someone right would that then still count like oh no you didn't have their consent so we can't use this as evidence or not i'm not entirely sure but i think you do need the other person's consent for recordings to be used as evidence in the court i'm not entirely sure on that please correct me if i'm wrong either way he got jimmy he planned the whole thing. He acted like that. He didn't admit his mistake. I was just about to say he finally admits his mistake. Nope, he did not admit his mistake. It was all to get Jimmy to talk. Now, like uh, Jimmy said, he got it. Bang on the money. Right to the tiniest detail. He got it. Chuck is good, though. Now then. Ooh, I said, you know, I said at the start. And Jimmy has taken on Chuck for the first time, and now Chuck has taken Jimmy on as well. Well, Chuck has been taking him on for quite some time now. But I think this is going to start something big, something huge, like a proper war back and forth between these two. What a way to end this season, a cliffhanger of all cliffhangers. And Mike, what's going on with him? They didn't even tell us what, like, they. that's it. They just left Mike... On that note, <laughs> you know, man, I re I thought I saw a tape when he picked that out of the box and I was like, oh, that looked like a tape. And the funny thing is I have, well, I guess I have seen a tape, but I've never like held one. I have it on my card. I mean, I can show you, but it's my credit card, so I'm not going to show you. <laughs> oh, and I forgot to mention this. I was supposed to mention uh, this at the start. Oh, and I thank God I remembered this. Kind of forgot, but I remember so it's all good. So one of my patrons asked me to look at the names of each episode of this season. They said it's an anagram or what? Switch cobbler loves off Rebecca oh, hi. inflatable beefy nailed and click Skogger Biffigan. Biffinku. All right, I got I got what word it was supposed to be. <laughs> the hell is it supposed to be? It's gonna take me forever to figure out. Break. What? 
Not break. Breaking. Breaking. Bre bre oh, there's no E. That's an F. Uh, what? Is this something related to Breaking Bad? Okay. Okay. I got back. And as soon as I got back, the rest just made sense. Ha! Okay. I mean, thank you. You had that much confidence in me that I would figure this out. But also, now that I see it, that would have been a spoiler. Wait, but he's not back. It's... It says Fring back. The note. That's Gus. So we're going to learn that the note was Gus in the next episode. Or did I decode this the wrong way? Fring's back, right? I used all the letters. Although there's, an, there's supposed to be an apostrophe. Actually, Bali, I had an apostrophe. <laughs> we're supposed to use only the first letters. Fring's back. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. If it isn't, uh, who cares? Whatever. That's pretty cool. All right, so that's that's pretty good. So, uh, okay, so if it's Frank's back, which I think it is, because I've used every single letter, so, like, it can't be a coincidence, then the note was Gus Fring. So in the next season, we're going to get Gus Fring. Let's go. Oh, lovely. All right, cool. I wonder if we're going to get to meet, like, Hank at some point. Do you know what I mean? Because Hank is in the DEA. So, like, you know, he, he could very well appear whereas for walt to appear i mean it'll have to be like in the back of a like a shopping mall or something john i mean like that or maybe like driving down the road or maybe working in the car wash like mike's trying to get his car washed and guy walt is there on the cashier or whatever something like that john i mean i was gonna say maybe it would teach kaylee but i don't think she's old enough to be in a high school he's teaching high school kids so there's eh, yeah that'd be kind of cool anyways yeah so the whole jimmy and chuck situation i mean it's very much on it's very much on you know and they're going to take each other on they are they already have i mean chuck has now done something to hurt jimmy like it could really hurt jimmy if he can use that as evidence which i think he can if you think about that scene for pretty much all of that scene he Jimmy hasn't really said anything that could hurt him because the entire time he's saying, yes, of course, I'm saying this to make you feel better. But the last thing, it's your word against mine. Well, actually, you got pretty riled up with the Kim thing as well, the Mesa Verde thing. That might convince a judge as well. But besides that, I mean, the whole time we know he's trying to make Chuck feel good. So maybe it won't hold up even if they are allowed to record. I mean, that's the thing. Chuck would know that, right? Chuck would know that. So if Chuck knows that, then there's really one thing he can do with that recording. And that is to take it to Kim to prove it to her. Maybe that's what he's trying to do. But Kim already knows. So that's not really going to... Ooh, he could take it to the Mesa Verde people that okay now that could really hurt him okay that could be something yeah but even if they do well why would they hurt kim that could hurt jimmy's reputation well not could it will but it doesn't affect kimmy so well jim is trying to start his own firm as well so it hurt his reputation which would obviously because his reputation would be hurt he would change his name his identity and become saul goodman yeah? Or is it too early still? Well, Gus is coming back, so it might be time. Ep uh, season 3 might be where it everything flips. Jimmy's no more and Saul is bored. But yeah, man, this season was great. This season just made me dislike Chuck quite a bit. Because like I mentioned at the start, yes, he is doing things lawfully, but he is evil. You know, the things that he's doing, he's doing them to hurt Jimmy. Jimmy is his brother, his blood his family and it is very clear that G uh, chuck is envious of jimmy you know you see it at many 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 different points chuck just simply cannot stand the fact that jimmy is doing well in life whenever something good happens for jimmy chuck has a problem with it when he was told about the davison main job chuck that is that jimmy got it he obviously felt uncomfortable he felt very uncomfortable because in that moment, you can see the way they were shot that scene. I mean, it is very clear. And the way he was acting as well, it was very clear that he was not happy to hear that news. 
it was obviously rejected uh, by HHM and it was because of Chuck Hamlin wanted him. Hamlin actually, in a way, admired Jimmy. The talk that he gave Jimmy there before Jimmy left, you know, that showed that Hamlin actually, he had no problem with Jimmy Howard. Hamlin was Chuck all along. And then Chuck telling Kim about the, the whole father story without any evidence. He still doesn't have any evidence that Jimmy stole the money. It could have been any of those people, anyone at all. But he blames Jimmy for one, his father's death and his father. He blames Jimmy for his father's business and then subsequently his father's death, which is just bonkers with no evidence whatsoever. Uh, Then there's the whole thing that happened with his mom. So his mom passed away saying the name Jimmy and she couldn't recognize Chuck. She uh, asked for Jimmy and he does not tell Jimmy what she said she does not pass along her final words. He hid the final words of a mother from her child. The guy, obviously, it is very clear to me now that the guy hates Jimmy, does not want him to succeed. And it's been clear before as well. We saw how much pain and he was in. I mean, he literally fell, hit his head. It was due to electricity, right? But he goes into these office meetings just because he's going up against Jimmy. It's to hurt Jimmy, so he's going to do it. He was fine with the Mesa Verde deal when he heard that Kim got it. But when he heard that Jimmy and Kim are together, that's when he was like, nah, let's go. He didn't even say a word. He just straight up went to the closet, got the suit, and he's like, let's do this. Let's get Mesa Verde back. And it wasn't about getting them back. It was about taking them away from Jimmy. That guy is, has so much hatred in his heart towards Jimmy. He just wants him to fail. And this is the beauty of this show is that because we know he's right. Everything he's saying about Jimmy, he we know he's right. That's why his character is so complex. Not just his, every character in the show is so complex because he's lawful, but he is evil. He's a douchebag. On the flip side, Jimmy and Chuck are kind of like the, uh, the opposite ends of the spectrum. So you got Jimmy, who's a really good guy. He's a nice guy. He cares for people. We saw that the only reason he came out in that moment and told Chuck what actually happened was to help Chuck. It was out of the goodness in his heart. The love that he bears for his brother. That's what made him confess. Potentially putting his entire career and identity on the line. Maybe getting disbarred. Never being a lawyer again. But he did it simply to make Chuck feel better. So that's how much love he bears in his heart for people. And Ernesto, what did he say? He said, you're my friend. That means, And we've seen this before with the janitor dude, him remembering these names of these people that are at the bottom in these firms. Jimmy cares about people. He, we've seen that time and time again at the start. He saved those two boys who were trying to scam him, the skater boys. And he tried to get them out of uh, whatever they got themselves involved in. They were going to get killed. He saved them. So he clearly cares about people. He just has his ways. He doesn't really respect the law. You know, he does not respect the law. That's that's what it is. And the law is sacred, according to Chucky. And that's why they have this little battle going on, is that on one hand, you have Jimmy. And Jimmy is sort of a means to an end, whatever it takes to get to the end, right? That's Jimmy. And then Chuck is like, no, 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 no. Oh, everything that you do, the means, they very much matter. It doesn't justify. The ends don't justify it. So there's a clash of philosophies there of the way they think and see things. And because of that, they're not able to get along. Honestly, if these two join teams and they're just a little bit compassionate and accepting of each other, they would make the greatest firm ever. Forget Howard. These two McGills, if they come together and they put their brains together and they open a firm there's no way, no one stands a chance. They would rule the f-ing world, man. These two are unbelievably smart in their own ways, but one cannot stain the other. And because of that, it just simply cannot work. There is no compromise. There is no sacrifice. It has to be this way. And if it has to be this way, then it's just not going to work. There's no bending even a little bit for either one of them, especially Chuck. At least Jimmy tried. Jimmy tries to go uh, do the right thing, take the straight path. But even with that, 
Chuck has an issue. Chuck keeps sabotaging him even when he tried to go the straight path. And it's still right now he's going trying to go the uh, the legal route again. He's not doing anything shady. He's trying to open his own firm and do things properly. But again, Chuck is getting in his way. So it's it goes back to sort of what Kim said as well is that, yeah, sure, Jimmy is colorful but he's becoming worse yeah he's a bad guy but he, chuck is really turning him into a monster at this point at every turn chuck is putting some a hurdle in his way which is just further pushing him to becoming Saul, becoming the, the you know the ultimate bad guy because right now jimmy is not that guy he's not Saul. not right now it's truly sad really to see things like that because even in the you know if you think back to the scene with the the mom right when their mom is passing away and jimmy's asking him to get food chuck sees that as jimmy trying to be disrespectful or jimmy not caring or jimmy being whatever that's why he dismisses jimmy so easily but what jimmy's trying to do or what i think he's trying to do is trying to get out of that environment get out of that mindset it is obviously painful i've been there it is extremely painful and it helps a lot to just walk out take a walk breathe then fresh air eat some food take your mind off of it just for a second you know you that relief that you get it is so precious in times like that and then and i say that because he follows it with a story from a funny story from the past and guess what chuck does in that moment he flips that back on jimmy and says now nah, the only thing i remember is you leaving and us cleaning up the mess people make messes at parties i mean have you ever been to one party where there has not been a mess so it shouldn't really be something that bothers you but it did chuck because it was jimmy and that's where we're at I do not like Chuck, but he's right. I like Jimmy, but he's wrong. And that's the beauty of this damn show. And not just this show, but also Breaking Bad. Oh man, this was good. All right, thank you for watching. I've been talking for so long, man. Glad I was able to figure this out. Frings back. So yeah. I'll leave you on that note. If you guys want to see the full length reactions, they are available on my Patreon. Early access to these episodes. You get early access to these episodes on Patreon as well. I upload them there first while YouTube is running their uh, copyright checks and all that. And it stays there for a few days. And then they come over to YouTube so you can check it out. Thank you so much, every single one of you, for supporting me all this time. And uh, subscribe if you're new to the channel. Like the video if you enjoyed the video. Do let me know what you think about what's happening at the moment. Um, what do you think about Chuck? What do you think about Jimmy? I'm very interested in that because, you know, yeah, I, I do dislike Chuck. But I also, I, I, I see his point. Like, he's not wrong. We know what Jimmy becomes. So do let me know in the comments down below. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then. Have a nice.